beautiful night in Harriman, Utah. Welcome into the Monarchs home opener here at Zions Bank Stadium. I'm Landon Southwick, joined alongside my partner for the season, Tom Hackett. And what should be a fun and exciting game between two sides who have MLS ties and two sides who are starting the season at different points. LA Galaxy coming in having played multiple games, 1-1-1 one, one, and one on the season, four points, and the Monarchs only having played one game so far, getting a draw in San Antonio. Tom, tonight should be interesting between these two sides. Both teams have players loaned down, but both teams have a lot of youth on the field tonight. And the youth is something that is very exciting for both clubs and something that they're trying to build with their first teams. Well, there's a ton of excitement considering the fact that a lot of these players, specifically from a Monarch standpoint, we even we who call games for the Monarchs haven't haven't seen in person yet. So it's an exciting time for more than one reason. Of course, Los Dos to uh, be in town is, is always a scene uh, in and of itself. So to, to have the Monarchs open up their uh, 2021 home campaign against LA Galaxy 2 is, is fun. Yeah, let's check out the storylines for tonight's match. And, and these storylines are kind of interesting. Four, four, and two all time between these two sides. Even on that, Monarchs hold the better record here at home. Last time they met was a 2-2 two -two draw in LA last year. Home opener, it's a 2-2-2 two -two and two record for the Monarchs all time. And the Monarchs are 25-12-7 and seven here at Zions Bank Stadium with last year's record as 2-8-1. and one. So really the losses came from last year and the Monarchs' goal is to return this place to a fortress. And that will be a tough task against this Galaxy side that has scored goals in bunches one game this season, five goals in the game. We're going to check out the visiting player to watch tonight, and a guy, Kariniak. Kai Kariniak, a guy that scored a goal on the season, one goal in three appearances, four goals with the Galaxy in 2020. An American father, Dutch mother, represented both sides in the youth international game, the Netherlands and the United States in the 17 and 16 age range. Let's check out the home player to watch tonight for the Monarchs, Ibrahim Bonse. Bonse has been a guy that's kind of been one of those that people are really high on right now. A goal and assist on the season in the season opener against San Antonio. Signed with the Monarchs on March 29th of this year and came from ASC Mimosas, the same club as Yaya Torre. So some, uh, some quality there. Tonight's match is brought to you by America First. America First is proud to be the official credit union of the Monarchs. Whatever you need for whatever matters most, America First is here to help. By MarketStar. Explore something more at MarketStar. Visit MarketStar.com for careers. By University of Utah Health, the trusted health care provider for the RSL family and yours. Visit uofuhealth.org. And by Zions Bank. For banking that helps you tackle every financial challenge, Zions Bank is for you. Let's take a quick break and we'll be back with starting lineups after this. First Credit Union, there's only one goal that matters, and that's whichever one is important to you. So whatever help you need to get started, or how much guidance you need along the way, we'll be right alongside you until you reach it. Because the only goal that matters to us is yours, truly. It's never been more true. We take care of Utah like Utahns take care of each other. University of Utah Health.
Summer is here, and with a great deal on a new Toyota, you can go out and enjoy all your favorite summer sports, like softball, beach volleyball, triathlons, whew, racing, golf. Whoa! Someone needs lessons. What makes an amazing deal even better? How about that every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care, a two-year or 25,000-mile no-cost maintenance plan with roadside assistance. Get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. We're back live here at Zions Bank Stadium in Harriman, Utah on a beautiful evening here out west here in so west of Sandy as we are underway here at Zions Bank Stadium. Galaxy 2 in their all blue kits, Monarchs in their all whites with the red trim and red imprints. Tom, we haven't had a chance to talk starting lineups. Do you want to just run us through some quick points for the Galaxy 2 as they're swinging along the back line? Uh, the Galaxy in a 4-3-3. That's what Junior Gonzalez opts for. Drake, Vasquez, Furkunus, and Lamb. You're back for Aguirre, Hernandez, Gonzalez. You're, you're three in the middle. And then Kareniak, Judd, and Picasso up top. And for Hamas and Alave and the Monarchs, it's a very different lineup. For a uh, different lineup in, in 2021 from what we saw in 2020. Jeff Doosnip, 16 year old. Big boy for a 16 year old, isn't he? In goal, Moberg, who played a lot of centre back a year ago, he'll be out wide. Uh, another 16 year old in Orozco, alongside the, the, the New Zealander Adams and Flores, to round out the back four. Brown and Bantz in the heart of the midfield with Bodie Davies. Neidegger, Mata, and Johnson up top. It's uh, again, another 4-3-3-like formation. Similar formations for the two teams this evening. Thanks, Tom. Throw in here coming for Flores. Flores long throw inside the box, trying to find the head of Mata. Brown's going to chase it down, keeps it at his feet. Look to play back to another young man. Norosco. Ball wide. And Nidig are not able to get in position to receive that ball. It'll be a throw-in for the Galaxy 2. Well, there are only a handful of players from the Monarchs that played a year ago, Brown being one of them. Uh, I thought Brown last year was very good, arguably the best player for the Monarchs. I thought he grew a ton. Uh, and again, this year, another very, very important and integral year for, uh, for Brown as he tries to develop as, as, a, as a holding midfielder. But a big body, uh, reasonably agile, has a pretty good understanding and, and can read the game well. Uh, there, there are a handful of aspects that I'm sure he wishes to improve on, passing being one of them. Yeah, and, and, and another guy, Moberg and Jimmy Slayton, the three sing singular names for this side that are back here in 2021 from the 2020 team. And that 2020 year wasn't the best for the Monarchs, and, and it's one that I think many people would like to just forget as we'll check out the referees for tonight. It's our center referee has done 33 USL championship games. Average is about three and a half yellows a game. But like I was saying, Good thing really... Good Chris Garcia's not playing then. Yeah, had a red card last game. He'll be unavailable tonight as Bodie Davis takes down Gonzalez. And it'll be a free kick coming for the Galaxy 2. You were saying, though? The, yeah, the Monarchs, it's a, it's a season for gifts. Losing eight games here at home was really a challenge. And four of those coming to New Mexico United... And it just felt like they could not get anything done here. Whereas in the past, we talked about that in the pregame, the Monarchs were very efficient here at home with 25 victories and only 12 losses, with eight of them coming this last year. Fonse, their defense, ball goes out, and Hernandez will take the throw. You, you don't have to watch a player like Bante for very long to know that he is the sort of uh, uh, character and, and player that dominates midfielders, uh, do dominates the midfield, I should say, and has done his entire career. He, he just looks like the sort of player that'll, that'll work tirelessly and, and put in a very good shift for any team that he plays for. And it's, I think, integral for, an, for a Hamas and Alave run team to have, to have a bit of that, especially coming off such a disappointing campaign a year ago. USL team of the week for Bonse, Ibrahim Bonse, ASEC Mimosas. This is his last club in the Ivory Coast. Same club as Yaya Torre, who has made quite a name for himself throughout his career. Nidigger going up the side, trying to get around the defense. It'll be a throw in. Callie Smith gonna point for a throw in for the Monarchs. The Monarchs 
We'll move some players up. Monarchs moving from right to left across your TV screen. Or north to south here at Zions Bank Stadium. If I were to compare Bante to somebody, it would have to be Sonny, the old RSL midfielder, uh, holding midfielder, defensive force. You know what else is handy while we're talking about it? You've got Moberg taking the long throws on the right-hand side. Ma Mata with a nice flick hitter. No one at the back post. Davis will chase. And the Marks are going to try to lock the Galaxy in. And Flores. Flores, who just made that challenge, threw a long ball in earlier. So you've got two long throw specialists. What a challenge that was from Flores, by Flores the way. Flores came flying in. Bodie Davis back to Bonse. Brown seeing a challenge from behind. Keeps possession all the way back to Orozco. Nice little challenge there from Flores. And Flores is one of those guys that feels like he's put on weight and some height between 2020 and 2021 while trying to get over to Nidigger from Adams, but cut off by the Galaxy 2. Ball's going to be swung wide here. Pressure from Malik Johnson. Malik Johnson's another name that many have mentioned as a guy to watch coming from Tampa Bay Rowdies. Capable of scoring goals, the Canadian international. Yet to make his stamp on 2021, but only a game in. It was game number two for the Monarchs tonight. One of the challenges for this Monarch side is really the preseason was not what they had hoped. Games didn't work out, weren't getting the team together due to visa issues. And it was a real challenge for this side to get together. And I think it showed against San Antonio as the team went down 2 nothing early in the first half in San Antonio, but clawed back to a 2-2 draw in San Antonio. Bonse is going to spray it wide, trying to find Nidigger. Nidigger trying to get on his horse, trying to keep it in. Does so momentarily. Crosses the sideline. It'll be a throw-in for the Galaxy 2. Well, it's a worthy conversation, isn't it? Because uh, front office, run by Elliot Fall, of course. Tony Beltran does, uh, does a ton for the Monarchs, as well as the assistant general manager. They, they put this team together very, very late. Uh, they were focused and fixated more so on the first team. Un un understandably so, uh, but, but as the weeks ticked on uh, over the course of, of the winter, certain players uh, started to, to trickle on in to the Monarchs. But, but my word, yeah, it did. It took them a long time, and they, they really didn't have much of a preseason. So that last week's game, y you, have to, you, you have to question why they go down 2-0 despite being up a man. Well, I, I think the, the answer is pretty simple. that They didn't get a preseason. It took them a while to, to, to figure it all out. Free kick coming. Two-man wall for the Galaxy 2. Monarch's going to throw some numbers forward. Davis and Bonse will stand over the free kick. Roscoe looking back post. Nidigger standing in an offside position, looking to move forward. Gets an acknowledgement from the center referee. Bonse, he'll drive it in. Looking back post towards Moberg. Punched out by Vomsteg. Flores is going to be called for the foul. As we'll see a replay look on the ball swung in. You can see where the target, maybe a little too deep in there. But Vomstead coming off his line nicely to punch away. And there you can see the foul. Opted for the in swinger. Snag your tickets now for Nashville's first ever trip to Rio Tinto Stadium tomorrow, <laughs> Saturday evening, 7.30 p.m. by visiting rsl.com now. Nidigger gets in position, falls down, pulls the ball into his waist, but it's going to be called for the handball. A very veteran move for a young man, but got caught with his hand in the cookie jar right there. He got. Nothing wrong with that. Looking for Gasso. Nice touch there by Sam Brown. Pokes it away from Hernandez. Hernandez scored a goal on Saturday, excuse me, on Sunday against Tacoma Defiance. The Defiance and the Galaxy 2 play to a 1-1 draw. Monarchs going forward. Bonse trying to get under it. Touched a little too far out in front of him. Sam Brown collects. Brown looking forward, trying to find space. The Davis out wide to Blake Johnson. Blake's got some wheels. Can he get around the defender? He's going to opt to go inside the box. Gets inside the 18. Cutting towards the goal line. Push it across. Bonse up over the bar. And that was a beautiful first opportunity for the Monarchs as they put themselves in a position 
with the wheels of Malik Johnson. Well, it's a wonderful transition from defense into the attacking third, and Bante couldn't have asked for a better opportunity on his preferred left side, and he's a, he's a defensive midfielder after all, <laughs> isn't he? So checking out our visiting head coach, Junior Gonzalez, in his 20, 20 plus years of coaching. It's 15, 12, and seven all time for the Galaxy 2, and his first official season as head coach, took over as interim head coach last July and became full-time head coach in January of 2020. Let's go back to that chant, however. Uh, what a great transition from defense into the attacking team. What speed Malik Johnson offered uh, on that occasion to, to burst down the left-hand side and uh, trust himself, trust his dribbling ability. Hamas and Alave on the screen. Big bustering centre back back in his day. It should be a goal kick. Malik Johnson, going back to him, 61 for uh, for the Monarchs. Blistering speed, as you touched on earlier. Just put that. Uh, just showcased that. Uh, and of course, uh, a pretty wicked delivery as well, despite being full pelt. Coming up against the touchline. That that is promising stuff from from the Monarchs. Yeah, you gotta like the way they played on that. The ball was a little choppy coming inside the box as it was cut back at that angle, but you've got to like what you see so far from the Monarchs playing through the wings, using the width of this field. It's Deuce Nap. We'll take the goal up. kick. Looking for Mata. Open Mata up. wins the header. Second ball won by the Galaxy 2. Ball forward, played forward by Bonse. He wishes he hadn't kicked it forward, but uh, Bomsteg will collect. Quite a few fans in attendance tonight. Oh, it's good to see him, isn't it? La Roca Knights, local soccer club here. Bringing the fans tonight. The USL is committed to supporting the LGBTQ plus community through the Forever Proud Project. The USL will strive to create safe and welcoming environments for all fans, players, employees, and partners. Learn, learn more at uslsoccer.com forward slash forever hyphen proud. Oh, well, we just got our first look at a high press from Hamas and Alave's men, and they succeeded. Uh, very impressive. They weren't afraid to put pressure on the ball, carrier, and subsequently earned themselves a, a throw in. Hey, it's going to be a yellow card. He's going to ask for his first, so what do we do when we have but he's going to be shown game. yellow as Orozco is a little late coming into that challenge. Again, it's mind blowing that, that Orozco is just 16 years of age, yet plays like he's, he's been doing this for, for countless years. Uh, he's got a good build and he's aggressive. On that occasion, maybe a hair too aggressive, but, but still, nonetheless, just 16 years of age. What a bright future he has ahead of him. And, and I can tell you firsthand, speaking to members of the front office, they're incredibly high on, uh, on Orozco. Something we'll have to keep an eye on as he now has a yellow here in the 13th minute of play. You never like to have your center backs sitting on a yellow. Gonzalez, push! I'm sure the Galaxy will, 2 will take note of that. Stop! Stop! It's going to be played back in the Galaxy defensive third. Please. You can tell already, uh, Real, uh, Real Monarchs, I should say, defending in a 4-4-2. Great ball there. Ball inside the box. Rosco rises high. They're headed away. See, now this is key for the Monarchs to have success, not just in this game, but this season. Transition. Okay, How are they okay, going to transition? Okay, and right there, they look promising. Only Davies caught himself here. offside. We're just in but again, it, it's promising to be able to go from the ball pinging around in your own box all the way into your own half within two passes. I mean, that, that's the sort of transition that Hamas and Alave is going to be looking for. And you have to like the hold-up play that was there of Max Mata to get the ball wide to Bodie Davis. Nice little settle, then push it wide. Another foul called on the Monarchs and a free kick coming for the Galaxy 2. Galaxy 2 uh, manager Junior Gonzalez already speaking to the fourth official asking how many fouls. Already uh, seen our first yellow card. I Can't know. imagine we'll see a few more tonight. I have to imagine. Line's going to be held on the 18 for the Monarchs. One man wall, Nidigger standing in the wall. Free or kick specialist, Mr. Hernandez, isn't Jorge he? Jorge Hernandez standing over the ball. See where he places this one. 
Looking back post, Vasquez all by himself rises high, but not enough power to get it across the six. I think he was trying to angle that more into the running path of his teammates. You'd hope so. You'd hope he wasn't trying to shoot from that sort of distance. But a great, a great free kick and nearly pulled it off. Cody Davis got a little lucky there. Kareniak goes down. Big switch there, looking for Johnson. Johnson kind of strolling forward. Bonse comes forward. Flying high with a little bit of a high elbow there. Surprised not to see the foul call. And he gets possession, gets dispossessed. And Brown right there to have his back. Johnson streaking forward, trying to find Max Mata. Mata to Bonse, just a little far behind him. And Bonse will chase it to the end line. Well, it's defended nicely by the Galaxy 2, and it'll be a goal kick coming. That's a reasonably good start, isn't it? Not just from the Monarchs' perspective, but I'd say the LA Galaxy 2 have also done a nice job in, in defending when needed. Uh, obviously a cracking chance, best chance of the match, go to Barnes, say, after a, a wicked run by, by uh, Malik Johnson down the left-hand flank. But outside of that, it's been a reasonably stale first 16 or so minutes. And, and right here, here we go again, the Monarchs pressing reasonably high. And the Galaxy rather comfortable comfortably passing their way out. But it'll be interesting to see if that is gonna, going to be a hallmark of this Monarch side and something they'll continue to do. But they pressed really high right there. Had already won one giveaway in that scenario. Another thing that we've seen early on from this Monarch side, haven't had a chance to see it tonight yet, but is short corner kicks. And we'll see if they opt to play that way as they did in the first match, or if that was just something they saw against San Antonio out for a throw in, Flores will throw it in. Galaxy defenders pushing for everybody to push forward to lock it in. Got a handful of academy players for both sides tonight. And we've talked about Deusnap. Deusnap, the interesting thing about him, he's also here a local product. Not too far here from the stadium is Jeff Deusnap, and we've got his family in the crowd tonight. Hopefully we'll get a chance to show them on screen. Two snaps, one of those players that really has followed the RSL keeper mold. Art of the Academy. Has some quality and shows his quality at a young age and really has stepped onto the pitch at a very young age. He'll be the youngest keeper in the RSL family history. Great ball there from Flores. Neidiger. Mata's inside the box. Can he get it to Mata? And I think he overcooked that one trying to get it towards Mata. Mata was all alone running inside the box. If the ball was placed towards him, I think had a chance to go at goal. Well, it's very unfortunate that that came tumbling down for a goal kick as, as the Monarchs had the numbers there. As we watch a replay, wicked ball, and he just, yeah, look, he just mistimed that cross, and he never really gave anybody a chance. But it was 3v4 in the area in favor of the Monarchs. If Nardiga could have put just even a half-decent delivery, I imagine been a good goal scoring opportunity but a great ball there from Flores to find Nardiger on the other side of the pitch to open things up. Yeah, and Flores is one of those kids that has really progressed in his game. 2020 and again was an awkward year but he showed that he has really come to play in 2021. It's Johnson turns on the, the afterburners gets around Mata's in an offside position. Malik Johnson's going forward and a foul from behind. I think we're going to see a yellow card shown. Wow. Malik Johnson just showcased his ability, didn't he? To Gonzalez, is Malik Johnson still down? Gonzalez is going to go in the book here in the 19th minute of play. One, one yellow keys for peace for both sides so far. Well, that was a tremendous run. Showed a lot of courage, a lot of confidence, obviously. He's reasonably fast, fast I think enough. The first play from Malik Johnson was the intriguing one. He kind of lost position and then just turned on the Jets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked like he was going to turn the ball over in a really, really dangerous part of the, the pitch, but, uh, but recovered due to his speed and strength and, and then decided he was uh, after more. Do they go for the in-swinger here or the out-swinger? They went for the in-swinger uh, a few minutes ago and then obviously uh, a little too deep. Johnson will, or speed. Davis, excuse me, will be taking this one. Looks like it could be another in-swinger. Two-man wall. Look for the lights of Max, Max Mata and James Moberg sitting very deep. Tom Stieg standing on his six-yard box. 20th minute of play. Davis sends it in, looking towards Mata. Mata heads it towards the PK spot. No one home. 
will be cleared by the Galaxy 2, settled by Flores. Flores to Kyle Adams. Recently with the Houston Dynamo, Neidinger settles, trying to get around the defender. Looks like he was about to win a corner, but a foul will be called. He got his foot. Track. Also on the USL team of the week for this last week. That's a good call. That's a good call. It's a foul. You just get the sense, don't you, of the last handful of minutes, the Monarchs have settled more so than the Galaxy, and they seem to be uh, far more comfortable with possession. Yeah and without possession for that matter. So we'll see how the Galaxy respond over the uh, remainder, remaining minutes in the first half. But as of right now, you'd have to give the, uh, give the nod to the Monarchs on Def home turf. Definitely have to be careful though. This Galaxy 2 side is very capable of scoring goals. We talked about that in the pregame. Game this season winning 5-0 against Las Vegas Lights. The night where Las Vegas Lights loan, or excuse me, LAFC loaned down a handful of players to the lights, but that did not matter. And Steve Trundelow's debut as head coach of the Las Vegas Lights. Foul there by Bonse. As he came down and caught him. That, that looked quite painful, that. If you have Gonzalez there, you don't have to go to the go inside. Stay wide. Track going forward. Originally a winger, playing in the defensive position tonight. And last game as well. Gasso, ball swung in, Adam sees it all the way, heads it forward, but not completely out of danger. Gasso. Johnson tries to stick a foot in. Davis sitting a little higher. It's Bonse and Brown sitting kind of defensively. And Davis sitting in, what is that kind of traditional 10 position for the Monarchs? Bonse, coming back slow. Ball wide, Picasso all by himself, tries to put it inside the box. Kyle Adams there to push it away, but a good opportunity there from the Galaxy 2. They had the Monarchs running back towards their own goal. Well, that's a tremendous clearance by Kyle Adams in the end, but what a build-up it was from Los Dos. Uh, patient, they didn't seem rushed. Uh, they played the ball back when they needed to, flicked it from side to side, and eventually found space here on the near side and nearly created a goal-scoring opportunity. Gary was all sitting all by himself in a position if he was to be found just in front of the PK spot. First corner of the match coming for the Galaxy 2. Creating goal scoring opportunities from counter attacks, fast counter attacks is entertaining and we love to see it, but there's nothing quite as pure as watching a team methodically move the football from sideline to sideline closer to their goal and nearly score. Jorge Hernandez, the ref's gonna hold up play for a second, Malik Johnson. Oh, it's a throw-in. There was a conversation going between our center referee and our AR quickly taken. It'll be held up slightly. Taking a little nod there, giving an opportunity for the Monarchs to get in position. A few little rain clouds west of the stadium now. Yeah, I was gonna say, driving in, it did look like there were a few storms in the area, maybe a bit of rain. Water never hurt nobody, no. though, did it? Especially in a year of a drought here in Utah. We see some sprinklers on a nice green field behind the pitch, <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, ball inside the box and put across. Flag stays down, and the Galaxy 2 take a 1 0 lead here in the 24th minute of play. What a delivery that was, and what a finish. Sensational from Los Dos. And it's your man. Kariniak. Kariniak, who we highlighted in the pregame. You'll see that ball come across the box from Hernandez. Right away, right away. All the way across, everybody looking with their hands up. It's Gonzalez that put the oh, ball in. Oh, excuse me, in. Gonzalez, excuse me. Just floated it in past Dusnip, and what a finish that is at full pelt. He gets the left peg to connect with the football, and into the back of the onion bag it flies. That's sensational from Kareniak, who's showcased his, his ability already this season. It's another great example of his class. Monarchs give up a goal first. They're going to play from behind for a second game this season. On the road, can't watch the match. Turn on Sirius XMFC, North America's only 24-7 source of soccer radio, featuring Ray Hudson.
Tony Miola and Rodney Mars. Fans of the USL can now listen to the best matches of the week along with action from the MLS, the Premier League, UEFA Champions League, Sirius XMFC Channel 157 on your Sirius XM radio and, and the Sirius XM app. Well, it's a chess match, certainly a chess match. We spoke briefly a few minutes prior as to the Monarchs looked like they were, they were in some sort of control of this fixture. We wondered what Los, Los Angeles was going to do, and, and, and well, we learnt that. Uh, they decided to score on one of very few chances created in the first half, but sometimes that's all that matters. Make the most of your opportunities, and Kriniak was able to do that, and all of a sudden... The Monarchs find themselves yet again in 2021 behind on the scoreboard. But if things bode like they have so far, this side likes to crawl back in the second half early on in the season. Something that Hamas and Olave is going to want to change. This side cannot be giving up early goals, especially here at home. And after owning a little bit of the run of play so far. We have to wonder, and I was going to bring this up early, if it decided not to. Moberg had played a lot of a lot of last year at centre back, and they've obviously pushed him out wide, to play more of a full back position at, uh, at right back. Uh, and I, I, I must admit, I wasn't able to get a great look at where he was positioned during that goal, but it did occur over by his side. So maybe there is a learning curve that Moberg still trying to, 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 to fathom and consider. As Flores makes a great turn inside. Nice job cutting in. Lee Johnson playing it in to Mox Mata. Mata header pushed away. And a good opportunity there from Mata. Mata rose up nicely. Put that on frame just inside the reach of Amsteg. What a delivery that was from Malik Johnson. And a great flick. It's very difficult, very, very difficult to generate any sort of power when you're just trying to glance the ball towards the net, especially when, you, when, when you're trying to do it from the penalty spot. And Mata there was able to get decent connection. What a save that was from Von Steeg to keep the Galaxy up 1-0. Neidiger out for the corner. Davis right with him. Monarchs have traditionally, so far in this early season, played short on corners. We'll see there where they elect to go today. You would have to imagine that they, uh, they will be doing that again with only Moberg and, and Brown in the box, in the area. Box Mata. Flashes inside the area, pushes it wide. Malik Johnson puts it inside, headed away. I don't understand that, I must admit. Flores settles. Flores going forward, trying to find two players. Split Bodie Davis and Moberg. And something that they definitely practiced on the training grounds, but did not play out exactly how they wanted to there on the pitch. No, it doesn't make sense. You've got Moberg and, and Brown, the only two in the box. And you end up taking a short corner, but within two passes, you're putting a delivery in anyway knowing that there's only two players in the box. You may as well throw a few more numbers in there and, and become a little more dangerous, a little, little more threatening. Going towards Picasso. It takes off the head, I think, of Picasso. But it'll be given still to the Galaxy 2. Hernandez. Monarch's trying to apply a little pressure. He realizes Mata is in those positions. He's a big guy. Yeah, he's a big boy, isn't he? He's got some force, the Kiwi. Had some opportunities, just has not been able to find the nets yet in 2021. Ante has got to be careful. He's flirting with danger. Ante, he's made a few challenges. He's nitpicking at the hills. That he's one throwing his body around. Left into Kriniak. A little too long there. He's already had a talking to. He's already received the yellow, if I'm not mistaken. Nope. No yellow, no yellow yet. yet. Good, 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 good. Two yellows shown sorry, so sorry. far. Orozco and Gonzalez. It's my, it's my first game of the year as well. So I'm bound for a few mistakes. The wind is starting to blow here at Zions Bank Stadium, moving from west to east as dust is starting to envelop the pitch a little bit. Went from not breezing at all to very breezy here in a quick few seconds as you're seeing the wind kind of wreak havoc, on, wreak havoc on the pitch right now. Thomas and Alave still showing us that uh, his touch is potentially worthy of a contract. <laughs> Big boy wants to get back out there. Oh, he still, still has it. Kyle Adams got his foot in there. Moves across and all the way back to Deuce now. 
Cossacks Legion behind gold for the Monarchs. Faithful supporters group of the Monarchs. Sam Brown. Come on, Davis. Back to Roscoe. Monarchs, I'm sure, will be looking to find more possession. More possession, faster ball movement, trying to find pockets of space in the heart of the midfield to then catapult them into an attacking threat. Maybe try and do it more centrally. They've utilized the wings a lot and have had success. It may do here as... Well, that looked like a handball, I think. Bonte calling for the handball, nothing called. Drag comes flying in. Neidiger now in position to go forward. Likes to go back, plays it short, but no one there. Brown comes rushing through, and Brown did a good job there to get ball. I think got body first, and that's what the foul will be called for. Brown and Bante certainly asserting their dominance, aren't they? Not, not scared to be a little physical so far tonight. Something I always failed at. Oh, definitely got body and no ball. The ball popped down. It looked like the ball came down. Sometimes the replay can be your best friend. We like technology. You know, we love it. Just don't, don't start talking VAR with soccer fans. It's a controversial topic sometimes. Brown called for the second foul. And he's going to get a little bit of a verbal warning. I mean, you're, you're at the point now, albeit just 31 minutes into the game, where Galaxy players are, are, are very upset any time they get contact. This Monarch side's been very physical so far in the match. And they are asking the referee how many more challenges, how many more fouls until we see some sort of warning. I think they, ha I think they have a, uh, an argument to be fair. Enter to win the Rail Monarchs text to win contest. Each match will give you a keyword to text for your chance to win. Winners will be randomly selected from entries at the end of the month. The more games you watch, the more chances to win. Winners will get a pair of tickets to every single home match for the following month. This match, the keyword is soccer. Text soccer, or excuse me, excuse me, text monarchs to soccer, 762237. Keyword is monarchs. Text that to soccer for a chance to win. Message and data rates may apply for a full complete set of rules, visit railmonarchs.com slash contest hyphen rules. Quarter kick coming for the Galaxy 2, their second of the match. Yeah, they were dangerous there, well, cut off by the Monarchs defense. That was a sloppy ball. Haziel Orozco, 16-year-old center back, had to clean it up. See the corner flag howling. Ball swung in. Mata rises high and clears. Monarch's going to try to push the line forward. Gal is going to elect to swing it across the back line. Back out wide. Second opportunity. Looking back, stick, but a little too long. It'll go out for a goal kick. Get up! Monarchs, like we mentioned, coming go! off a 2-2 draw at San Antonio. Bonse and Davis, the goal scorers for the Monarchs. LA Galaxy two games last week, with the final one being Sunday against Tacoma Defiance when, with a 1-1 draw. And Jorge Hernandez scoring the goal in the 78th, only to give a, up a goal late in the match. Kind of an interesting stat out there from Nicholas Murray, and we love Nicholas Murray and his stats. All, team, all four team, row teams tonight scored the opening goal in the USL Championship games. We're gonna see a replay look at this one. And this is where Zach Brown has to be careful. That's a touch and go foul there. There's not a ton in that. Uh, and if, if referee opts to not call that, uh, Monarch's out of position, out of shape, and in certain trouble. Mata oh, with the Meg trying to get it to Nidigger. Nidigger goes down. It'll be a throw in for the Monarch, or excuse me, for the Galaxy. Knight has gotten himself in some pretty good positions, hasn't he? But boy, just a, a little bit of a class. He's, he's lost his feet and some heavy touches, some
some soft touches. He's just finding his feet at the minute. If he can figure it out to come second half, then he could be a real threat for the Monarchs down that flank. 35th minutes. Headed forward by Adams. Bonse rises, wins the first ball, goes for the second, wins the second. Monarchs with possession. Davis and Mata weren't quite on the same page. Bonse dancing, gets it wide to Nidigger. Back to Moberg wearing the captain's Stop armband fire. for the Monarchs. Up again. Been with the Monarchs really pretty much since the Come start. On, I'll have to double check my math, but I believe making his 97th or 98th appearance here in the USL Championship. With all due respect to Carl Adams, he isn't the one you want playing that ball in and over the, uh, uh, the back line of, of the Galaxy. That ball needed to be uh, flicked out to Flores or, or a fullback in the hopes that they can do maybe a better job. That is not what Carl Adams is there for. 36 minute of play, Galaxy 2 lead 1-0 here, courtesy of a Kriniak goal, his second of the season. Flores is going to be called for the hand on the back of the shirt, I believe. Holding his head. And down on the pitch. Yep. No, you can't quite see. He may have hit his head on the turf coming down. Well, that was the first time uh, Flores was, was beaten this evening. He was beaten with speed there. He's a very aggressive fullback that loves to throw himself around. But he conceded to Picasso there, uh, which is interesting. I imagine we'll see more of that now, now that we've seen Picasso have success against Flores. Flores, I thought, got the better of him earlier in the match. I wonder now if we see the Galaxy try and come to the right-hand side, the near side, and, and utilize that mismatch more. Pretty much a short corner here coming for the Galaxy 2. Jorge Hernandez going to swing it in with his left foot. Two-man wall for the Monarchs. Line pretty much on the six, going back post, but overcooked. Even with the wind against him, overcooked that ball. Uh, that's really poor delivery from somebody that's much classier, much more skilled. Here we go, high press from the uh, from the Galaxy. What what are the Monarchs going to do? They're going to ask a lot of Mata here. chases it down, it'll be a throw-in coming from the Monarchs. Hey, did, he did quite hey, well, you didn't he? Yeah, you don't have to hate on that. Uh -oh. Ramonta put himself in a position to force the Galaxy to play it forward, but the defense wasn't quite back. Mata, using that big body, gets it back to Flores. Flores and Hernandez kind of going it at it in the last few. Or, excuse me, Picasso. Appreciate all those of you tuning in tonight, whether it's on ESPN Plus throughout the nation or here locally on the KSL TV app. Heard from a few few people out there, including Sacramento coach Mark Briggs. Briggsy! Former Monarchs coach. We send our love. Yeah, gotta, gotta love hearing from him. As Johnson goes down, no foul called. That's an interesting call, that, let me tell you. Bantse has not had his way with the referee this evening. Moberg goes right into that challenge. Moberg holding his knee a little bit. Soon to be father. Congratulations to him and his wife. Great ball there from Bantse. Moberg looks like he might have, might have caught something a little awkwardly. He can run it off. Bonse to Davis, back to Bonse. Can he get there? Bonse going forward. Bonse doesn't get there in time, still down on the pitch. Kyle Adams going forward, and Judd's gonna chase him. Adams elects to keep it in, and Judd does a good job there. Dangerous now for the Monarchs. Numbers, ball pushed around, and Doosnap uses his big frame. Sprawls out just slightly, and collects. Ah, oh, the Doosnip family in attendance. You gotta love that. Getting to see him here at Zions Bank Stadium. Nidigger goes down, foul by Drac. Somebody needs to ask uh, 
Jeff Dusnip's parents, what they fed that young man from a young age. You and I both have young children. We need those recipes, Mr. and Mrs. Dusnip. The fields of Harriman, Utah. It's got to be some grass-fed beef out here, right? Something in the water. A big 16-year-old. <laughs> Lee Johnson trying to get around the defense. Good job there by the Galaxy 2 to clean it up. Brown's header back to Flores. Ball is going to wickedly spin in the air. Galaxy 2 doing a good job of holding possession there, and I've noticed that throughout the match so far. One of the things, they've been pretty calm and collected as the ball's moved around in that space, holding the possession advantage so far in this match, 62-38. Push, push. Keeping possession. Push. Carol White to the near side. Back inside. Ball right there, good ball. But the Monarchs defense collapsed nicely. The offense we were seeing from the Monarchs really has kind of disappeared as Mott is playing deep. Monta felt like he got fouled from behind, but no foul called. Davis sends it up in the wind. Join us next Friday as the Monarchs go head to head against Austin Bold FC. Austin Bold FC here at Zions Bank Stadium next week. Gonzalez trying to spread his team out, mentioning to his team, continue to keep it wide. One of the ways they've done to keep the Monarchs at bay so far. Go, 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 jump, jump, double. Johnson, Tackle. nice little footwork there. Gets around a couple, trying to get around the final defender. Still battling. I think Johnson's a little frustrated there not to get a foul call. I think, I think there was much there. No, I think he bit off a bit more than he could chew in the end. He had success earlier in the game, running rings around three or four players. Pulled up the landing gear kind of softly there. Anders just went down like a pile of potatoes there, almost willing, Lee asking the referee to call another foul. It's very obvious from the booth that the Galaxy players are getting a growing with frustration, with just the physicality of the Monarchs, and there, there's Neidiger again, throwing a foot out that's probably not needed nor required. Hamas and Alave has, has certainly had his say on this team. If, if he goes down swinging again in 2021, he's gonna do it his way, he's decided. 13 fouls called against the Monarchs so far tonight. Here through 43 minutes of play. Still looks a little ginger on that right side. I know he had an off-season surgery. Played 90 minutes against San Antonio FC, but took a knock a few minutes ago. Ball's gonna go out of play, and it'll be a throw in for Moberg. Well, it was, as we approach half time, uh, I imagine both teams go in rather frustrated. Uh, the Monarchs, for obvious reasons, they're down a goal. Uh, and the Galaxy have to go in rather frustrated as well as... Nydigger to Johnson. Johnson inside the box, cuts in towards the near post. The near post was covered nicely. I don't know that that was necessarily the best option. Ball took him a little wide on that touch. Angle right. would have been tough well, was as Bonse was calling for it. Bonse and Mata, 2v1, right at the top of the six-yard box. It was a wrong decision from Malik Johnson, who's done a lot in this first half that's put the Monarchs in promising positions, but on that occasion, he probably made the wrong choice. What I was going back to, what I was saying earlier, is that the Galaxy, although they're up a goal, they, they haven't really generated too many scoring chances, uh, which, which is probably going to frustrate them. Bonse and Brown sitting a little high. Monarch's gonna have trouble with this one. Judd inside the area, Judd scores! Galaxy two take a two nothing lead just before the halftime break. And what almost seems to be a clone of last week for the Monarchs as they went down two nothing late in the first half. Uh, can I retract everything I just said? I think the Galaxy are gonna go into halftime rather uh, 
rather excited and pleased with their performance. Can we note what a finish that is, near post, tucked it away. The ball from Hernandez is wicked. The weight on that pass outside of the left peg to then find Judd in stride, who then pockets it into the near post, is a magnificent goal, especially on turf. To be able to judge weight outside of the left foot, that is amazing class that Hernandez just showed. What a goal that is from LA Galaxy 2. Preston Judd deserves a little credit there on that finish. That's a Knew where beautiful Deuce snap finish. was, put it right here at the near post. I mean, he, he put that within inches of the right post. Uh, you could not put that away any cleaner than what Judd did. Great finish, but without that pass from Hernandez, none of that even happened. And very few players in this league on turf can do that, in my opinion. 35th overall pick by the Galaxy in the 2021 Super Draft. Played his college soccer at the University of Denver and Cal Baptist University. Stoppage time has been announced by our fourth official, Jordan Downs. One minute of stoppage time here at Zions Bank Stadium to close out this first half. Well, you just got a great example of the Hide wind the that these players are dealing with. That, that ball just died in the air. Malik trying to go wide. Johnson comes off Johnson. Be another throwing coming from the Galaxy 2 as they'll take their sweet time. Kill this one off through the first half. Well, this is the challenge that any home team faces when they go down one, two, or even three goals. Is the Galaxy now are going to be in no rush. What a move that is from Judd to nutmeg Adams. Judd with a nice nutmeg. Kyle Adams gets back nicely defensive on the defensive side. And moves the ball away. But now Almost through with wrestle, or excuse me, the ref puts the whistle in his mouth and 45 minutes of soccer played here at Zions Bank Stadium. Two nothing lead so far the, for the Galaxy 2 and the Monarchs are gonna go in a little deflated, but not something they haven't overcome so far as they were able to do so and pull back two last week. The obvious difference is uh, San Antonio were, were down a man and right now it's 11 v 11. You'd have to imagine that if any red card's going to be shown, the Monarchs are going to see that. They've been very, very physical throughout that entire first 45 minutes. Heading into the locker room. Heading into the locker room, both teams. We'll throw it to a quick commercial break and be back here with second half stat or first half stats after this. The scrum, a contest for the ball involving eight forward players who bind together and push against the other team's forward players in a contest for possession of the ball. Scrums restart Utah's play wild after beauty calls us outside. Longing for nature, we answer the call. Mountain trails beckon us to rise. Pristine lakes entice us with offers of quiet reflection. We know that as we climb these peaks, our spirits will be lifted, that upon reaching the summit, our perspective will be renewed. The mountains elevate our resilience. Here, we are endless. Atlas Disposal is dedicated to preserving the spaces we share. We also understand the importance of sustaining our resources. We're proud to bring our operations to Utah with technologies like zero emission vehicles and a new recycling system coming to Rio Tinto Stadium starting in 2020. Together, we can keep Utah beautiful and sustainable for generations to come.
Summer's here, and with a great deal on a new Toyota, you can go out and enjoy all your favorite summer sports, like softball, beach volleyball, triathlons, woo, racing, golf. Whoa! Someone needs lessons. What makes an amazing deal even better? How about that every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care, a two-year or 25,000-mile no-cost maintenance plan with roadside assistance. Get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. You are the sunrise making Thank my you. day. Thank you. I miss you guys. You are the moonlight shining my way. This is where I call home. It's never been more true. We take care of Utah like Utahns take care of each other. University of Utah Health. Atlas Disposal is dedicated to preserving the spaces we share. We also understand the importance of sustaining our resources. We're proud to bring our operations to Utah with technologies like zero emission vehicles and a new recycling system coming to Rio Tinto Stadium starting in 2020. Together, we can keep Utah beautiful and sustainable for generations to come. Welcome back here to Harriman, Utah. Two nothing Galaxy so far. Tonight's halftime show is presented by America First Credit Union. America First is proud to be the official credit union of the Real Monarchs. Whatever you need for whatever matters most, America First is here to help. By MarketStar, explore something more at MarketStar. Visit MarketStar.com for careers. And by Les Olson and Sharp, dominate the pitch with an agile workforce. Equip your Sharp office with brilliant professional monitors cutting-edge collaboration boards and state-of-the-art multi-function copiers with Alexa-enabled voice commands, Sharp and Les Olson, official office partners of the Real Monarchs. We have a special guest here with us in the booth, Real Salt Lake General Manager, Tony Belchon. Tony, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, pleasure to be here. Tony, I know we've talked with you in the past and had opportunities to talk with you off air Let's talk a little bit about how 2020 was moving, or 2020 was, and moving into 2020 for you guys. A little bit hectic on the transfer side, and this roster may be a little thin still at this moment. Transfer window closes June 1st. How has it been for you guys to adjust to the scenario, get a team together, pretty much a whole new team, and move into 2021? It's been, uh, look, the adjustment has been continuous. As COVID has evolved and as we've learned how to how to cope and how to live within the COVID reality, uh, what that means, the implications for, for our soccer organization have been pretty impactful. But look, it's great to, to see fans back here in the stadium at Zion Pack Stadium today, and it's good to play some soccer. And we had that feeling last year after after a significant pause, and, and you know, it's, it's good to see the team renewed with fan support here in the stadium again this year. So uh, lots of moving parts, certainly, and it, it makes it difficult, certainly from an immigration process. We have a, a, a large portion of our roster is national players so a lot of hoops to jump through but we've got here and uh, it's, uh, it's been fun. Tony what, what, what's the purpose of the Monarchs now? It, it felt like a, a few years ago you were hunting for that championship you got the championship and now you bring in a ton of youth is, is the purpose of the team changing a little bit where winning isn't as important but developing young talent is, is maybe the, the most important aspect now? It's exactly that during the COVID pause we kind of you know utilize the moment then to, to think about the monarchs and think about their purpose and our enterprise and our pathway as well. And that was, uh, in that time, we made the decision to revamp the monarchs roster. And um, in the best way we thought we could utilize them from a development standpoint. And that's why you see out here today, the roster is, is kind of broken up into three groups. You know, there's the international portion of young players that we've, we've had our eye on and we've brought in to, to get experience and to be under the, the coaching of our staff and develop here. And then also the academy portion as well. Very young players. We have Christian Nider got here, Asiel Orozco, uh, Daniel Flores, and countless others who have been with the Monarchs the entirety of the preseason and are, are developing. And um, 
trying to take advantage of the opportunity at this professional level. And the other side of that is loan downs from the first team. And those are players like Bodie Davis who can provide a little bit of leadership, a little bit of continuity in what it takes to be a professional um, in the hopes of bridging the gap between the Monarchs, our professional team at the USL level, and the MLS level. With the and that was one of those challenges we saw for the club in 2020. There really wasn't that possibility. So guys, there's a handful of these guys, and Bodie Davis got his moments with the Monarchs last year, but there was guys in his position last year that just weren't getting minutes, game minutes. Was that a challenge for you guys to watch guys that were kind of in that no man's lands per se, and this year maybe now need to get that chance to go, I want to play some minutes. I want to go show I'm the best player on the pitch for the Monarchs so I can get into a game with Real Salt. Exactly. The void was very frustrating. It certainly wasn't ideal from a development standpoint because you lose that time. Uh, because there wasn't the ability to loan players back and forth between the first team and, and the Monarchs, uh, there was no fluidity. Um, so it was very much you had to come down for the entire year because the two teams were separate entities they were in protected environments that were separate from each other so again that was the the COVID reality a lot of problems uh, that we had to deal with but I think we made the most of it and it is good to see a little bit more fluidity this year so we can just forget 2020 is what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> nobody extent. was here to see it anyway Tony this could be a stupid question so do forgive me if so but but well, does Hamas and Alave does, does he speak to Freddie all the time throughout any week and do, do, do the two teams the Monarchs and Real Salt like do they try and play at a similar standard of football so that when players from the Monarchs do get the call up to the first team, it's a, it's an easier transition, or are they two separate entities? Uh, no, it's it's uh, very much the like. And, okay. and the reason for that, and that actually extends all the way down to the academy as well, because, um, again, it's it's more advantageous for us if the players within our academy and the, the Monarchs level are learning the principles, the, the tactics that Freddie is teaching at the first team. So once they're ready from a soccer standpoint, the tactical is, is seamless. Well, Tony, we appreciate you taking the time. It's always a pleasure to hear some insights. We're going to have to pick your brain throughout the season. So so get used to having a headset on. Get it's used heavy. to joining it's us it's over heavy, here. I realize. We don't want to mess up the hair, but we want you in the booth. <laughs> so thanks for do joining us tonight. My pleasure, guys. Tony thanks Beltran, assistant GM for Real Salt Lake, joining us and giving us some insights onto this squad. Let's check out the USL Team of the Week and Player of the Week. This looks like it's the Team of the Week for USL League One. So not guys we'll look at, but two guys on the pitch tonight for the Monarchs, or excuse me, one for the Monarchs and one for the Galaxy 2 on the team of the week in Drac and Ibrahim Bonse. So both those guys on the team of the week as both teams, Galaxy 2 out on the pitch, Monarchs yet to come out. Let's check out scores around the USL Championship, like we mentioned, one of four matches playing tonight. Tacoma Defiance, or excuse me, three matches. Three additional matches and the Monarchs match tonight. Tacoma Defiance took the 3-1 victory uh, midweek. Charlotte Independence over the Battery, 3-0. Miami FC, 1-0 over the Red Bulls, 2. And Colorado Springs switchbacks, 4-0 over Sporting Kansas City, 2. Sporting Kansas City, 2 will be traveling to LA next week. Let's check out some highlights from the first half, Tom. Well, it was uh, it, it was a very interesting first half. Great opportunity here. The best of the match from a uh, from a Monarch standpoint. How Bant skied that, nobody will ever know. But a wicked ball there from Malik Johnson found him. Unfortunately, it wasn't good enough. Nardi guy's been getting into good spaces, but wasn't able to finish on that occasion. This is the goal, Picasso. No, it isn't. Sorry, Carl Adams there clearing the ball. This is more likely to go. Yes, all right. Wicked finish there from Karenia. What a what an amazing finish. Tucked on the goal line. Was able full pelt. Nothing Moberg could do. Nothing Doosnip could do. One nil Galaxy oh. against the run of play. Another opportunity for Mata after Malik Johnson puts in another wicked delivery. Malik Johnson's been very very good for the Monarchs down that left hand flank. Nothing to show for it as of now. And that ball there from Hernandez, you cannot teach. The finish from Judd, also exceptional. 2-0, minutes before the halftime whistle. And all of a sudden, the Monarchs find themselves in a position they did a, a week ago, albeit level when it comes to players on the pitch. Last week against San Antonio, down 2-0. Up a man. This evening against the Galaxy, down 2-0. 
11 v 11. Lots of work to do for the Monarchs. Wonder what Hammerson Alave said to him at halftime. You know, the funny thing I was just about to mention, wishing we had had the opportunity to speak with him about that, because the interesting thing was something happened in that locker room last week. Goals came really quickly into the second half. 47th with Bonse and 54th with Davis. Is Dylan's going to come on into the match? Neidegger comes off. Kind of a fun Which, night well, for Dylan. Yeah. As Dylan recently came from La Roca. There you go. Good for him. He's got uh, many friends, I'm sure, in the crowd. Doesn't surprise me, though. Neidegger, we talked about in the first half. He, uh, he actually got himself into a lot of really dangerous and promising positions, but he wasn't able to, to, to finish them. He didn't quite show the class required uh, to, to remain on the pitch. So that, that, that move there does not surprise me one bit. Hopefully Dylan in the wind can uh, can offer something down that right-hand flank for the Monarchs. I think the key here for the Monarchs is obviously going to be transition. How do they transition from defense into their attacking third? If the Galaxy do end up penetrating the back line of the Monarchs, they've got to capitalize and get it quickly up the other end of the pitch because those opportunities aren't going to come around too often. What's more likely going to be the case is the Monarchs is going to control most of the possession in the second half and they're going to have to navigate and pick past their way through a structured setup defense from the Galaxy, which is no easy task, and they're going to have to do it on two occasions, you would have to imagine. So the passing in the wind on turf is the uh, is the secret to success for Hamas and Alave and the Monarchs. What sort of class do they have? Did Tony Beltran bring in this offseason? We're about to find out. What a test this is for the Monarchs. First time at home this year. The Monarchs will play it backwards. Kyle Adams playing it forward. Find Malik Johnson. Johnson gets around. It's going to be fouled quickly inside the center circle. The Monarchs are going to push numbers forward. Ball out wide to Flores. Bonse plays it back. Possession numbers almost evened up as the half went on. 52-48 in, in favor of the Galaxy 2. Two goals, five shots for the Galaxy 2. Monarchs were three shots, but the really the one that still comes to mind is the shot that Bonse had early on, just unable to finish. No, it's criminal. He had to put the ball on target. You put the ball on target. I mean, there's only one spot you can't put it, and that's down the goalkeeper's throat. Anything, a yard either side, and he's not saving it. He's on the penalty spot. Great turn there from Hernandez. Dylan coming in on his first one. Numbers out wide. Monarch's trying to, gonna try to set up. Shot in towards, and a bending ball asking for the deflection. Dylan has to be careful there because he pro he ran all the way to the other side of the pitch and left a gaping hole and a lot of space for the Galaxy to operate in where he should have been. Ball inside the box, dangerous opportunity. Monarchs put themselves in an awkward position. Snap pushes it wide. Flores there. Snap a second save. Two big saves there by Snap. Flores trying to defend and clears the ball out of danger. Good job there by the homegrown product there. As Davis is going to be called in an offside position. Wow, what's a couple of saves there from the young 16-year-old goalkeeper. Standing tall, great shot, palms the save, out to the side, another fantastic stop, struck very, very purely. Wasatch Legion petitioning for the name Mountain Dewsnap. Is that right? Did you just learn that tonight? Wasatch Legion, you know, there's probably going to be a TIFO. Oh, my word, what a nickname. Game. Wall of the Wasatch, Nick Romando. There you go. Legendary around these parts. Still with the organization in the academy, helping with the goalkeeping union there. Free kick coming for the Monarchs. 2 nothing, Galaxy 2 here in the 48th minute of play. Live from Harriman, Utah, in this USL championship matchup. Between two sides, they're not in the same division this season. Galaxy 2 in the Pacific Division with Las Vegas Lights, Oakland Roots, Orange County, Phoenix Rising, Sacramento Republic, San Diego and Tacoma, ball wide. Leak Johnson not in position to get there and it'll roll across the end line. Monarchs in the Mountain Division. Likes of El Paso. 
Well, if the Monarchs are going to come back, Bodie Davis has to find the ball more, and he has to be able to utilise the football more so than he has done. He hasn't found it a ton, and when he has, he hasn't done much with it. He's the sort of player that's playing centrally for them in uh, the number 10 role, if you will, and he's required and asked to do more than he has. Things that looks like the Monarchs have made a slight touch, looking like they're more in a 4-4-2 four, 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 situation now. As Dylan goes down. Uh, like, this is my first action in a game. <laughs> Don't, don't take me down yet. There's a song in that. I get knocked down, but I get up again, right? I like that song. I like it a lot. That's the sort of stuff right there I'm talking about. That ball, even if there isn't any wind, is going to be incredibly difficult to play. To bring down. And, uh, and he's gone ahead and tried to do it. He's got to settle, take a few touches, compose himself. He's a quality player. Hey, throw it in. Drack. Into Gonzalez. He'll spray it wide. Ball miss hits. Flores kind of goes down, but no one in the area. Get our lines up. Flores picks up his head. He's going to play it forward, trying to find Ma Mata. Fonse's touch was a little off there. Forward. Get too tight, Aguina. 50th minute of play, still 2-0 here between these two sides. Monarch's coaching staff egging their players on to, to press. I think that ball rolled over the foot of Dylan uh, and ended okay. up going out. In the first position, looks like Moberg wasn't there to touch it. That's why uh, Jack will take the throw in. Heavy ball back to him. Puts him in an awkward position. Monarchs will battle. Snag your tickets now for Nashville's first ever trip to Rio Tinto Stadium tomorrow evening by visiting rsl.com. 7.30 kick. Real Salt Lake as they try to get back in the victory column. For a loss to San Jose. There's Wondolowski. Came on as the super sub. That was amazing, wasn't it? Unbelievable how he continues to do it time after time. Throwing coming for the Monarchs. Flores has done a good job of putting the ball inside the box so far tonight. Mata there flicks it on towards Dylan. Still inside the area. Bonse. Mata. Bonse is going to put it towards goal. Kind of an awkward overhead side volley onto that. He ended up getting reasonable purchase on it, didn't he? Are you not? Don't hate on that. Since we're going to see a replay look at that one. Probably never going to get enough, though, was he, to, no. to trouble uh, Von Stieg in goal. But make sure he's awake. Von Stieg was awake, paying attention. Vonce needed some communication from his team there as he put himself in a kind of an awkward position. His teammates bail him out. Flores going forward, trying to find Davis. Too far out in front of him. The captain. Oberg. Having a really hard time generating anything central. Really difficult time. Everything's being pushed out wide from a Monarch standpoint. Monarch subs up and moving. Galaxy subs just got pulled from the upper bleachers here. Down to start moving on the sideline. 53rd minutes. Monarchs have to find some attack. Rack, nice little cut back there. Plays it forward. A good little turn there from Aguirre. He'll get the ball back. Plays it wide. This movement from the Galaxy 2 looks awesome. Wide floor is defending. Ball inside the box. Still inside the area, Judd, but cleared away by the Monarchs. Looks like it. Monarchs appealing for a deflection, but none there. Throwing for the Galaxy, quickly taken. Tom, the Galaxy looking like they're into this second half right about now. Yeah, they're not holding back, are they? They're, uh, they're rather adamant to add to their lead, which is, I think is a healthy way to play the game. Always look to score, regardless of time on the clock. 
foul is going to be called on Fonse. Fonse, I think, is going to be out of warnings at this point. How he has not received a yellow card is uh, beyond me. Let me tell you, he's had challenge after challenge, and again, he finds kind of two feet in and makes contact. Well, ask and you shall receive. It looks like he's going to receive yellow. Audible what is uttered from the crowd. Well, that's troublesome for Hamas and Alave because you get the you get the sense we haven't seen Bonte play a ton. Obviously, this is the first time you and I have seen him play live, considering it's the first game at home for the Monarchs. But he just comes across as if he's the sort of player that only knows one way. He plays in fourth gear and fourth gear all the time, whether it be practice or game. So uh, his teammates going to have to settle him down and try and manage his his energy and feistiness throughout the remainder of this contest. Third yellow card of the match shown. Our center referee, like we mentioned in the pregame, averages about three and a half a game. Ball played inside the box. Beautiful ball there. Moberg and Flores rise high and are able to clear. Davis tries to go into a couple Galaxy players and now the one, -on -one battle with Kriniak. Fouls Kriniak. Monarchs up to 16 fouls <laughs> this evening. Physical side. And one thing that we did see against San Antonio is this is a side that is very physical and not scared to go into challenges. We saw Chris Davis sent off. Or excuse me, Chris Davis. Chris Garcia mixing up Bodie Davis. Chris Garcia sent off as he's here in the, the stands this evening instead of down on the pitch as he saw two yellows in the match shown his second yell late in the match and sent off. Hernandez, ball swung in, beautiful ball there. Moberg does nicely to clear. Lee Johnson will apply some pressure. Ball forward. Flores, kind of expecting Kyle Adams there. Lightly left it. Yeah, this is important now for the Monarchs to swiftly move the football into their attacking third. Part of me has to wonder just how much of a factor the wind is playing in this one. It's picked up, but it's not gusting as hard as it was a few moments ago. Uh, but it's certainly in favor of the Galaxy going from right to left on your video screen. Television screen is what I should say. Video screen. I don't know where that came from. Sam Brown's now going to see yellow. So both center mids now on yellow cards for Hamas and Alave. He's got to be thinking, if I can get through the next 10, 15 minutes with Bantz, Bantze and Brown, one of them has to come off. I don't think you can get through the rest of the game on a yellow, and he's starting now to, co to converse with his assistants. Because part of me thinks he's thinking the same thing I'm thinking, Landon. You've got to start to wonder what substitutions each of these coaches is going to make. And they both have a fairly deep bench. And the five substitutions in three instances is available. But a free kick coming for the Galaxy 2. And they've been fairly dangerous on set pieces. And we know Jorge Hernandez is very capable of serving the ball in nicely. Another ball coming here right inside the area. Mata heads it away and it's going to go out for a throw in just in front of the corner flag. 57th minute of play. Still 2 nothing, Galaxy. Drac will take the throw in. Judd comes running towards him. Judd I think is going to be called for the foul as Moberg was pretty frustrated. Moberg getting there, wondering why no foul called. Well, this hell of a conversation with our center referee. Displeasure there. He's not thrilled, is he? Moberg, who's normally quite a happy young man. No, very happy guy. He's hard to uh, tick off Have old You Moberg. see the frustration there. Well, that's a foul. Ball hadn't been thrown in, and I think that's where our center referee is opting for the rethrow. Sam Brown plays it forward. Cut off by the captain of the Galaxy. Kraniak, he'll take a shot and it's gonna go just wide. I don't know if Dusap saw that, saw that completely, but did not go to ground, but was wide of goal and it'll be a goal kick coming for the Monarchs.
Both teams' substitutions are getting a little more active. Looks like the Monarchs are probably going to make a substitution here in not too long. 58th minute of play. Oberg. Forward to Dylan. Dylan's going to get his first run going at Drac. Drac goes down. I think that was a little shoulder to shoulder. And yeah, I, I don't know if that's a foul. That's a tough call. It looked like both players went into one another, and the bigger body in Dylan won the battle. Uh, oh, a little bit from behind. It was. And Drac did a good job he to position a, himself. He did. He did a tremendous job in hindsight. Uh, to get in front of Dylan. It looked more shoulder to shoulder in, in real time. It's all about that position battle. Dylan's got to use those fresh legs, though, coming on as a substitute at the halftime break. That's. Gonzalez has got to be careful there. Oberg wasn't trying, it didn't look like to kill him in the sense of kicking the ball at him. But that kick out there by Gonzalez is going to get him in trouble there. Oh, uh, Moberg, I think, obviously in, in the wrong, but it was accidental. The whistle went right as he made contact, and it just so happened that he rocketed it into uh, Gonzalez's back. This one could get chippy. I have a feeling the, remainder, the remaining half an hour is going to get potentially ugly. So he went down. Yep. Kind of awkward, but uh, there's... No. It'll be interesting to see what the disciplinary report says after that one. <laughs> Don't love to see things like that, but no cards were shown in that instance. You have to be careful, though. Don't you? Up 2-0, there's no need for that. You're upset that you've you had a ball shoved up uh, shoved up the, the middle of your back, but it's still up 2-0. The last thing you'd want to happen is to go down a man. Oh, yeah, th th this one's getting feisty. Sure what you can say about that play. Got it stuck in between the legs, Gonzalez. And I think there was a little frustration coming from two Monarchs players coming into that co collision. Tried to hop away with the ball inside his... Playing rugby for a second there, weren't they? Kind of interesting. But our ref is elected to not show cards in either of those instances, which may be a little shocking. Yeah, I know. He's averaged quite a few yellows over his time. He's done a good job, though, has the referee, I think. Definitely definitely keeping it mostly in check. You have to wonder how these next few minutes are going to be as it's been a little chippy here in the last couple. Mata, he'll chase it forward. And this one's going to be a little awkward. It dealt with nicely. Back to Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. Boy, he had me thinking there for a minute. Big <laughs> Jeff Deuce now. Gotta love him. The 16 year old, almost 17. Monarch's gonna play it along their back line, looking for players to check in from the midfield. And it feels like it's maybe gotten a little stagnant yeah, time I, in the midfield. I think what's happening and what needs to happen, I should say, is I think Bodie Davies needs to come higher up the pitch. He's playing alongside Mata, but he needs to play as more of a 10 and not a 9. And There's space there for him to operate him, but he's not utilizing it. And I'm not entirely sure if that's Hamerson Alave telling him to do that or, or if that's him trying to be a danger, danger threat to... Uh, the centre-back pairing of the Galaxy, I, I, I can't quite tell you. But there's, there's certainly not much movement occurring in the midfield for the Monarchs, which is something they're desperately in need of at the minute. Craniac almost got onto that last one. Both teams kind of bouncing it around. United Soccer League, all 31 championship clubs and its players stand together in support of diversity, inclusivity, equality, and compassion. Please join us for a 16, 15 second moment of silence as we are all united against racism. Thank you. Going quickly taken from the Monarchs. Trying to see if they get into the flow of this game. 
almost looked like Gonzalez was looking for that foul quickly. Monarchs get another throw in 64th minutes. Asiel Orozco is something, isn't he? He's fearless, he's strong, he's intelligent. And not, sca not scared to go oh. into challenges. Mata gets pushed away, no foul called. Bonse is going to go forward into the challenge. There's a lot of frustration there in the midfield of the Monarchs. Just not feeling like they're There's getting There's also the foul frustration called. from the uh, from the Galaxy. Uh, they're now asking the referee to, to, to show yellow anytime yep. they're being found, which is something that... Well, and Bonse is sitting on a yellow card. Brown received in the 54th. So is Brown. Monarchs need to be careful. Monarchs kit man getting a few kits ready. Something has to change for Hamas and Alave. The, the, the second half, the start of the second half, certainly hasn't gone the way they had they had hoped for. The Galaxy have controlled most of the ball, most of the tempo, uh, and seem to be the far more dangerous team here, despite being up 2-0 on the road. Uh, and so certainly something needs to change. Bringing some fresh legs, get some movement in that midfield, and maybe, just maybe, they can muster their way into creating a few attacking opportunities. But right now, they don't look like creating anything at all. Not communicating the whole time either. They saw Flores and Johnson. Johnson thought Flores was going to move forward. Johnson cut inside, and Flores kind of stood a little stagnant. But everything's long balls up, up, up the guard or up the flanks from center backs, and, and that can't be the case. You've got to, you've got to be able to, to find a way to sloppy turn over there from Brown, and all of a sudden they're in trouble. Ball out wide, Kriniak, ball inside the box, dealt with nicely. But not completely pushed away by the Monarchs. Drax gonna keep it in, Moberg comes across. And pushes it out of play. But this is just the way the LA Galaxy uh, 2 would have, would have hoped for. They, they, they'd be thrilled. Junior Gonzalez, well, he'll be wrapped. Up 2-0 on the road in a reasonably difficult environment. Anytime you come to Utah, it's challenging. Considering, uh, you know, the Galaxy are a team that plays most of their games at sea level. Yep. So you'd have to imagine that, you know, come around this time is when they're going to be huffing and puffing. But they're up 2-0, and, and they're doing a great job in limiting anything the Monarchs are trying to muster. They, 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 they don't look dangerous at all to the Monarchs. And on the flip side, uh, the Galaxy have had most of the ball in their attacking half. The Monarchs need to move the ball f fast right now. This is, uh, if they're gonna have any success, they catch them right on these sort of Flores breaks. putting it inside the box, bouncing ball. That's better, that's better from the Monarchs. But a little too far in front. Ooh, Bonse. I think now's the time. If you're Hamas and Alave, you have to seriously start considering some sort of change. And I think you have got to. I think he's forced, to be fair, to, to take, take Brown off, off or Bance off. And I, if, if I was Hamas I'm taking Bance off because he is flirting with a red card. And if he gets shown red, the game's over. It's done. And that's the conversation being had as Moberg, the captain, kind of brokering maybe a little bit of a deal there to keep Bance on the pitch. Well, there's still plenty of time in this fixture. 67 minutes in. There's 25 odd minutes left. Oh, I think the coming down, he maybe caught him a little bit. Just have to be careful. The Monarchs can still get themselves back in there. Looks like Monarchs are gonna make a double substitution here momentarily. Briggs and O'Brien coming on. Well, I have to imagine that Bodie Davies is gonna come on and Briggs will likely replace him. And then uh, O'Brien would, would likely come on for, uh, for Bante, but we'll have to wait and see. Briggs, guy capable of scoring goals. Pretty decent college career. There's that move. Bante will step off the pitch and O'Brien will come on, making his season debut for the Monarchs. See Bodie Davies looking over. Yeah, you just have to have a feeling he knows his time is come to an end, although we'll have to wait and see. I don't know that for sure. Really 
Briggs will be coming on here for Mata. There you go. Briggs has that big, intimidating frame. So they'll hug. And he'll come on, make his professional debut. Thought Mata provided uh, a decent amount for the Monarchs up top. Very challenging position to play against the Galaxy, considering how everything had gone. Very few opportunities, but he did a lot of dirty work, and I'm sure Hamilton and Lave will be pleased. Maybe so much dirty work. Look at that from Briggs. He's already come on to offer, and Bodie Davies is in space. Malik Johnson. Johnson the inside the area. Johnson just wide. Well, that's better, though, from the Monarchs, isn't it? Briggs comes on, has an immediate impact, flicks the ball into the center of the park, and all of a sudden, Bodie Davis and his youth is up, up, and away. Malik Johnson's also flying, and by goodness, he toe-poked it just shy of the left-hand stick. But that's, that's tremendous from the Monarchs. That's exactly what Hamerson Alave needed. He brought the subs on, and bang, there's life again, and there's plenty of time to come back. They're still in it. Right, Galaxy have to be high. careful with Briggs. Briggs, like I mentioned, making his professional debut. O'Brien as well. A lot of guys for this Monarch side with Dylan making his professional debut. Kind of fun to see those three substitutes getting in in their first action. And this is when they go. Look, what I love about the Galaxy is that they're not playing like a team that's up 2-0 on the road. I think that's tremendous. I think mean, it's fun. It's entertaining. It's exciting. You always want to score goals, but what that allows the Monarchs now is they're going to have space and time when they turn the ball over deep to get the ball up the park and create goal-scoring opportunities like they did a few minutes ago with Malik Johnson. Ball played forward. Briggs gets there out wide to Johnson. Monarchs pushing. Dylan outside the area. Dylan takes a crack. Looks like it took a deflection or in the corner kick for the Monarchs, first of the second half. Again, that's better. Briggs had another role to play in that build-up. Big Buster and Briggsy is putting his big frame to work. Back to the goal, play the speedsters into it and let them shine. This is brilliant from the Monarchs. Much better. That was Much a lot better. of Bs in a sentence there. Oh. Brilliant, big. Yes. Bustling. Briggsy. Briggsy. Big man. Monarchs are going to play the short corner. Davis, a couple step overs, looking towards the top. Brown shot and takes a deflection. I think that one's going in if it doesn't go off Moberg's back. But a beautiful training ground execution there, but just takes an awkward deflection off Moberg's back as we'll take a, a look at this one again. And now, now that's the sort of stuff fans pay tickets for. That's beautiful from the Monarchs. Momentum starting to build. You're just starting to feel as though there's a shift occurring. And the Monarchs are starting to find their feet here in the second half. Since 1947, Select has been the leader in soccer ball quality and innovation. Select is the official ball supplier of the USL Championship and many of the elite leagues throughout Europe. For the latest Select products and special offers, please visit SelectSportAmerica.com. You have to wonder now, what does Junior Gonzalez do at this point? He has to start to wonder, am I gonna give up a goal? Oh, almost an opportunity there. You know, Brian found himself in a position, track kind of awkwardly there. But the Monarchs have a little life here in the 73rd minutes. Well, if you're Junior Gonzalez, I think you bring on another defender and you say, lads, let's pump the brakes. We, 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 we've done enough here in the second half. Now's the time we try and hold on for dear life and see if we can get out of here 2-0 up. Bodie Davis trying to get the touch, maybe a little too slow. Monarchs flying around though. Now they're exposed, numbers forward. Ball out, out wide, Kriniak. It's well done. Rosco standing in front of him. Bodies and ball goes in towards Doosnap and Doosnap collects. That's good, that's good defending, 4v4. You never want to be in that position. Well played from Big Moberg out there. Ball played forward. He's on if he can get there, but cut off nicely by Vasquez. Good communication from the young Monarch players. So all three substitutions have had an impact now with Dylan, O'Brien, and Briggsy. That attacking third all of a sudden now just has life to it. There's movement, sloppy ball from 
from Brown. That's not the first time he's done that, this contest, and that's something he needs to work on. Throughout this season, his passing needs to be better, and he knows it. Solid player. Monarch's going to be called for the foul. Fans not pleased with that call. Let's see a replay look at this one, Tom. I mean, I understand that it's a foul, but I can also see the referee letting them play on. Both going for the ball, very little contact. Good ball there from the Galaxy, out of position of the Monarchs. Aguirre inside the box, turn. Judd, Judd still with the ball. Snap comes up big, puts his frame there goes up and over the bar. Oh, that's magnificent from Los Dos, making, uh, making moves up the left side, weaving their way in. Big Judd taking a few touches, composed despite being so close to goal. And what a save that is. Stands tall, stays big, 16-year-old. Well, he eats his meat and potatoes. You know he eats his meat and potatoes. He just showed that then, didn't he? Earning the nickname of Mountain. Mountain Doosnip. Gotta love it. Corn Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. We call him the Dewster. Mountain Dew Snap. Comes up big again. This is going to be his first professional endorsement at some point, right? Flores. Likes to keep it himself. Crosses the midfield stripe. Plays it wide. Good ball there. Can Dylan get on the end of it? He does. Dylan settles, tries to get around heavy touch, though. But cleared away by the Galaxy 2. Monarchs will get a throw in. Boberg, long throw coming from the Monarchs. They're going to put some numbers in the box. We're going to see a substitution coming from Junior Gonzalez. Throw it inside the box, cleared away. Flores tries to settle. Put it back. No one home. Brown. Fans follow the Real Monarchs and the rest of the USL Championship all season long on ESPN Plus. Home to the USL, MLS, Bundesliga, UFC, and more. Join the more than mil than 12 million sports fans who have already discovered ESPN Plus and watch the championship live every week. Sign up today at ESPNPlus.com. Some 2,900 soccer matches on ESPN Plus throughout the year. With 600 plus being the USL Championship and USL League One. Kind of a fun little uh, statistic there. Well, we talked about what move was Junior Gonzalez going to make, and this is it. He's going to take off Gonzalez and bring on Davila. Davila will come on for Junior Gonzalez yeah. in his squad, trying to make the adjustment. You have to wonder if it's this is the piece that will kind of slow down what the Monarchs have brought in the last few. Yeah, I, th I think so. I think what you're going to see is, is Davila playing in between... Aguirre and Hernandez. Gonzalez got quite attacking throughout the course of games, more of attacking midfielder. I think right now they've, they've decided enough's enough. Let's let's try and settle and retake control of this fixture of this game. Another academy product coming on the pitch this time for the Galaxy Two. Oberg will win the throw-in for the Monarchs. 78th minute. Dylan, get around Velasquez, but not around the second defender. Monarchs have had trouble with the speed, just haven't had that extra gear to get around the second player. Uh, it's on two occasions now. Dylan with just a heavy touch, he's done all the hard work, and then pokes at a hair too far in front of him. Over quickly to Dylan. Dylan tries to get around the defender, battling there. A silly foul to give up. It felt a little soft there and a quick whistle there from our center referee, but nonetheless the foul called. But there was no need for, for Dylan to grab jumper. Need to just let him go and put him in a precarious position to try and move the football up the pitch, which was always going to be difficult. Tucked away there in the corner. 
let them out too easily. Looks like we're going to see a double substitution coming for the Galaxy 2. Valdez. Let's try to get the other name. Bawa. Bawa. Coming on, Monarchs are going to bring in Mendoza. Substitutions coming here in the 79th minutes. Davis dropping a lot deeper now. Which I, I, I've thought he's needed to do for, for quite some time now, so it's good to see him finally Ritz. finding the football. Nice hold up play there. Mober picks up his head, runners inside the box. He'll put it inside, looking. And a nice ball inside the box. Again, very promising from a Monarch standpoint. They're finding space on the wing. And they're uh, creating attacking opportunities, which they were unable to do through the first 20 minutes of this game. But they're now playing far more free as the captain gets subbed off at right back. Mendoza comes on. Looks like Moberg might have been a little gassed there. Did have an off-season surgery. Correct. Played 90 in the first game and maybe just trying to keep the legs fresh for him as Mendoza comes on. He's also slightly playing out of position, isn't he? Uh, Bawa is going to come on for Kariniak. And Drac is going to move forward. So Drac is going to move into more of an offensive role, and Bawa is going to move back. I've been very impressed with Drac. Picasso is going to come off. Made the team of the week, dig Drac a, a week ago. Valdez will come on. A couple changes. One like for like and one slight adjustments, but moving a player forward. Drac will see if he still has the legs. He's worked hard in the defensive side of the game tonight. Dylan's going to go down, be fouled. 80th minute, 10. A little under 10 minutes left here in this one. Monarchs trail 2 0 after giving up goals in the 21st, or excuse me. 24th and 42nd. Monarchs with possession. Brown. Drax seems to be struggling now. Enter to win the Rail Monarchs text to win contest. Each match will Give you a keyword to text for your chance to win a pair of tickets to every single home match for the following month. Winners are randomly selected at the end of each month. So the more games you watch, the more chances to win. Tonight's keyword is Monarchs. Text Monarchs to Soccer. 762237. That's Monarchs to 762237. Message and data rates may apply. Full For a full set of rules, visit realmonarchs.com slash contest dash rules. Good defense there by the Monarchs. And Judd, nice professional move there. Put the hands behind him. Gets the foul called. And free kick coming for Galaxy 2. Judd's obviously had uh, a say on this one this evening with that second goal. Beautiful finish young man but it's been just it's been a fascinating encounter hasn't it between a young 16 year old prodigy and Judd Br look. Briggs with a nice nutmeg there keeps possession for the Monarchs and that's exactly what the Monarchs need here if they're going to try to claw their way back into this game Davis out wide to Johnson Johnson goes towards the touchline can he get it in and cleared away Looks like it's going to be a corner kick for the Monarchs. That's his move, isn't it, Malik Johnson? He's done it on a handful of occasions this evening. He'll tap the ball in between his feet, in the, uh, on the inside of his feet, I should say, and use his speed to then beat defenders, catching them flat-footed as they try and guess which way he's going to turn. Ball put inside the box towards Adams, but no real threat. Yeah, it's a tricky one, that, isn't it? Because Adams did well. He got about as much purchase on the ball as he could have hoped for. But that delivery just sat up there a hair too long. Needed to be more speed on that for, uh, for Adams to be able to work with. 
What a touch from Orozco there. That's sensational. Looking good. And he's one of those oh. guys that at this age, these are big games for him. They're yes. big opportunities and chances for him to grow in. And that's one thing with this really roster clear out that they had, a roster cleanup, however you want to think about it, with only three players coming back. There's a lot of these young guys that are getting a chance that maybe never would have got a chance if things hadn't changed or 2020 hadn't gone the way it did. Yeah, and he's going to grow with games. He's only 16. I just can't quite believe that. He plays years above his age. And he's going to get better every single week. He'll grow and grow and develop, learn. Now or never. For the Late in this match, 85th minute of play. Planet South with my partner Tom Hackett. Thanks for tuning in this evening. This matchup between these two Western Conference teams, non-divisional match but two sides battling for three points so far the galaxy two are in clean position to take all three ball inside the box calls for a pk nothing there but briggs took a nice crack at goal uh should have scored to be fair you'd also have to question the penalty wouldn't you what did was barwell watching the ball It's tricky that. Be a little hard done to call a PK in that situation, but Briggs did a good job putting it on frame, just yes. unable to redirect it onto goal. Flores trying to get around three defenders. And Judd. Judd's going to be wide. He's out in front of Adam, slow a play. He's going to go into the corner. be a goal kick for the Monarchs. Join us Friday as the Monarchs go head-to-head -head against Austin Bowl here at Zions Bank Stadium. 7 p.m. May 21st. Brown picks up his head late in this match. Monarchs have to get one quickly if they want to have a chance in this game. Bodie Davis drops con now just alongside Sam Brown. Uh, the Galaxy are, are dropping deeper and deeper and allowing the Monarchs to gain possession and waltz on into their own half. But as soon as the ball goes into the attacking third for the Monarchs, there's just there's so many Galaxy players. It's too crowded. There's no space. And it's very, very difficult. I mean, essentially, you're asking one, one individual, a Malik Johnson, if you will, somebody of his stature and caliber to to beat players off the dribble to then open up space and force other defenders to then cover. And, and if, you, if you can't do that, then there's no way through. And Malik's capable, and that's what we've seen. But as it gets late in a match like this, it becomes a little more difficult. Legs are heavy. Yeah. Making those cuts. Well, mentally as well, you, you, you know, you're down 2-0. You know, if you're only down one goal, it's a different story. You gain motivation by trying to become a hero but 2 nil, you know one moment of brilliance still requires another one we're gonna have a little stoppage it'll be interesting to see how much another throw in for the galaxy too look it's it's worth crediting uh, the galaxy and they the way they were able to uh, to play this one out um, I thought they were very fortunate to go up 2 nil right there prior to the halftime whistle. They made the most of their opportunities, and that was the story a, a year ago for the Monarchs. That There were countless games a year ago, Landon, where the Monarchs looked like they belonged yeah. with, with that opposition, but they just didn't take their opportunities. As uh, Junior Gonzalez makes another swap. Drake comes off. Barujas comes on. Felix. Name. Love that name. Love the hold up play so far for Briggs. He seems frustrated. Big body. Yeah, Briggs has done really well, I've thought. Adam 
Williams picks up his head and put it wide. Flores. Got to find a way to get the ball in the air and into Briggs. And let him compete. We might see here. Ball inside the box on the ground. Galaxy 2 going to avoid the corner kick. Good job there. Adams going to be in a foot race with Judd. Gets there first. Plays it back to Deucenap. Deucenap finds Flores. And that's the maturity there. Not to just blast it forward. Uh, that's uh, Paul from Flores. But the flag is up on Briggs. It'll be an offside call. The moment the of stoppage panic. time is going to be announced here shortly. Yeah, moment of panic there for Flores. When, when you needed to be calm, there was no need to blaze away and, and, and kick the ball up, uh, high up the pitch when, when there was time. Never really gave Briggsy a, uh, an opportunity in the air. Monarch's next game will be against Austin Bolt, like we've mentioned here at Zions Bank Stadium in a week from now try to recover from what looks to be an impending defeat here for the Monarchs. See if they can do something here in the last gasps. Johnson running forward. Does Johnson have anything left in the tank? He's going to get there first. Tries to cut back. He's going to go at the defense. And he's going to be held up. That's going to be a yellow card shown. But a good professional foul oh, there. I was just going to say. As he was beat. The definition of a professional foul there. That's uh, for Krannis. We'll see yellow and the Monarchs are going to have a free kick. Three minutes of stoppage time announced. A good delivery obviously required here. And the tall timber. The likes of Briggs, Adams, Brown. Try and get on the end of this. But, but it needs to be a good delivery. Davis. What I mean by that, there needs to be speed on the delivery. You can't float the ball up there because Try and get a header on it. You just can't generate the power required. So Davies has to put a good delivery, a flat delivery, into his tall timber. A little jostling in the back. Monarchs with almost everyone forward. Mendoza and O'Brien sitting back. Ball driven in, put inside the box, right towards Briggs, headed away. And the Galaxy 2 going to try to kill off this match there by O'Brien and you're seeing some veteran kind of moves there by some of these guys. Gotta love what you're seeing so far. That ball didn't have enough speed on it. it it's something I'm sure Hammerson Alave is going to address this week. Uh, it's unfortunate from Mendoza. Mendoza goes down. So you're seeing some cute fans in the crowd waving their scarves. Briggs. Love him to be inside the box at this point as the ball is going to come back in. Mendoza is going to get a second chance to Brown. Brown clips it in, trying back post, lifted a little too far. And this one's going towards the final whistle. Many, many wasted opportunities from the Monarchs. The Monarchs yeah. just didn't have what it no. took tonight to overcome the Galaxy 2, but give credit to this Galaxy Certainly. 2 side as they've done a good job. And it really shows four points on the season now just about to move to seven points on the season in four games. I think the Galaxy have, have, done, have done wonderfully. Uh, they've had passages of play where they've, they've looked like they were being outplayed, specifically in that first half. I thought the Monarchs were on top. Um, and any time we mentioned that the Monarchs were on top, it's as though uh, the Galaxy were listening because they scored shortly thereafter. And... Uh, I thought a 2-0 lead for the Galaxy at halftime was generous. But if you make the most of your opportunities in this game, you, you, you are going to be rewarded. Goals are obviously hard to come by. and The Galaxy have done a fantastic job. And in this second half, Landon, they've controlled the, the, the first half of the second half. And then as the game started to get away, I, I thought Junior Gonzalez made a few adjustments right when he needed to. And he's killed this game off. Got a player down. Looks like that one is just going to be about everything here at Zions Bank Stadium. As you're going to see the foul, it looks like he caught him right on top of the foot. Those ones hurt. They definitely do. Studs yeah. on top of the foot. Our ref blows the whistle to resume play.
can't be much more than this. Uh, this might be the final kick of the game. And that's the final whistle. Monarchs fall 2-0 tonight here to the Galaxy 2 as they take all three points. Behind goals from Kriniak and Judd in the first half and the Monarchs unable to climb back into this one. I, uh, I thought it was a, a promising affair from the Galaxy. I thought they were tremendous. I thought they managed the game well. And you know what? I thought there were positives from the Monarchs as well. I thought they had opportunities that they will be ruining at the minute. Uh, Bantse in the first half should have scored and should have given the Monarchs the early lead, but didn't. And this is all a learning curve it, for a team in the Monarchs that hasn't played much football alongside one another you would assume they will get better the longer the season goes on. And so I think if you're Hamas and Alave, you try and take as many positives as you can. And obviously for Junior Gonzalez and the Los Dos, you get out of here quickly, back to sea level, and uh, put the legs on ice. We'll take a quick break and be back with final thoughts and upcoming schedule for this Monarch side after this. When you're a member at America First Credit Union, there's only one path to happiness. And that's whatever path you choose. So no matter where it may lead you, whatever you need to get there, or how far it may go, we'll do our best to make sure it's clear with the America First Visa credit card. Because the only happiness that matters to us is yours, truly. Utah's wild beauty calls us outside. Longing for nature, we answer the call. Mountain trails beckon us to rise. Pristine lakes entice us with offers of quiet reflection. We know that as we climb these peaks, our spirits will be lifted, that upon reaching the summit, our perspective will be renewed. The mountains elevate our resilience. Here, we are endless. disposal is dedicated to preserving the spaces we share. We also understand the importance of sustaining our resources. We're proud to bring our operations to Utah with technologies like zero emission vehicles and a new recycling system coming to Rio Tinto Stadium starting in 2020. Together, we can keep Utah beautiful and sustainable for generations to come. enjoy all your favorite summer sports like softball beach volleyball triathlon whew, racing golf whoa someone needs lessons what makes an amazing deal even better how about that every new toyota comes with toyota care a two-year or 25,000 mile no-cost maintenance plan with roadside assistance get your toyota today toyota let's go places Utah's wild beauty calls us outside. Longing for nature, we answer the call. Mountain trails beckon us to rise. Pristine lakes entice us with offers of quiet reflection. We know that as we climb these peaks, our spirits will be lifted, that upon reaching the summit, our perspective will be renewed. The mountains elevate our resilience. Here, we are endless. Back here live at Zions Bank Stadium, seeing a couple Monarchs players signing autographs, and a couple of these guys probably getting their first opportunity, but a 2 0 loss for the Monarchs. This is dejected souls walking into the locker room and just didn't feel like it was all that needed to be there for the Monarchs tonight. Galaxy 2 did a good job, a complete performance from them. Felt a little helter-skelter as we got midway through the second half, but we're really able to close things down, Tom. Monarchs' upcoming schedule got some opportunities in front of them. They've got Austin, First Austin and then at Austin, a team that they can compete with. And it's going to be a good chance to go see what they can do. Then a long trip across the country to see Hartford, Jimmy Slayton's hometown out there. Then against New Mexico United, who had their number last year. And a two home game stand there with Sacramento Republic and Mark Briggs. So some interesting games coming up for the Monarchs. But tonight's they fall 2-0 
and on the season still sit with one point after the draw last week in San Antonio. Tonight's match has been brought to you by Zions Bank for banking that helps you tackle every financial challenge. Zions Bank is for you. By MarketStar, explore something more at MarketStar. Visit marketstar.com for careers. That's all she wrote here at Zions Bank Stadium. Thank you. I'll add to your thoughts quickly, Landon. I, uh, you know, I thought it was interesting what Tony Beltran said at halftime. He mentioned that obviously winning now at the Monarchs level isn't everything. It's, it's more about developing and playing a style of football that, that the club wants to play and to integrate that with the first team. And, and so I think that's important to remember is this is such a young team. They haven't played much alongside one another. And I thought they showed, they showed glimpses, of, glimpses of brilliance, pardon me, throughout the contest tonight. But certainly room for improvement. And uh, Hamas and Alave, the competitor he is, does not like losing. So he's not going to hope for too many more losses along the way. Tonight's match is also brought to you by the University of Utah Health, the trusted health care provider for Real Salt Lake and yours. Visit uofuhealth.org. Snag your tickets now for Nashville's first ever trip to Rio Tinto Stadium by visiting rsl.com. That's all she wrote here at Zions Bank Stadium. Thank you for tuning in on ESPN Plus or KSL TV app. We appreciate you joining us for this journey. For Tom Hackett, myself, Landon Southwick, and our wonderful crew that made this happen, we'll catch you next Friday night here at Zions Bank Stadium. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.